Hello YouTube, welcome to Open TDD with Leutnant Joker. Now this is gonna be a first on my channel because this is gonna be live commentary. So far I've done only replays, World of Tanks and some War Thunder. Well, okay, some life in War Thunder I think, but uh, nothing in terms of real combat. Panzer Corps of course, but now this doesn't have a replay. <laughs> Wasn't be much fun either. This is this has to be done live, but it is a first, so we see how it goes, and it will be a long series as every everything goes right because I tweaked these uh, this game a little bit to make it last a little longer. So before we start, let me go quickly over the options that I'm using to get this started. If you don't care about this, you want to jump right into the action. I'm uh, having some kind of a link appearing somewhere right now for you, so. Uh, Click there now to skip right to the action. Okay, now they are gone and we go over the options. Now in the game options, I pretty much have everything set for a German um, scenario. I have the German currency, it's still uh, Deutschmark since we're starting in 1920. Well, actually 1920 would be Reichsmark, but <laughs> doesn't have that one. But it will switch to Euro uh, once we pass, I think, 2002, uh, the game actually makes the Euro available. We're driving on the right, saving every month. Um, I have German Towns name, that's an add-on that I downloaded, so we will have realistic names for the towns. I'm using English for you guys, so a lot of stuff will have English names that doesn't exactly fit the setting, but uh, otherwise you wouldn't be able to read anything. Screenshot format is not, uh, not interesting. I'm using the OpenGFX graphics set, uh, the Open SFX sound set, and the Open MSX music set. Um, you sh if you download this game and install it, these, uh, the installer should by default download these at, as well and install them. If you don't have them, you can download them uh, on the website um, that I have in the video description separately. But as I said in the standard installer, these come with the game so just put them in there and you will have this graphic set there is a z base uh, set here that you can download that is 32 bit and a little higher resolution but most of the add-ons that i'm using don't have that high resolution uh, as you can see in the background i'm using these graphics not this uh this is Ar arctic setting actually we're going into tempera uh, into temperate setting but that's what i'm going to use now uh, for those of you who are advanced Again, if you're not interested in this, you can skip it. Just to see what I'm playing with here. Localization, yeah, standard metric stuff. Display options, um, nothing interesting there, I think. Yeah. Colored newspaper, I think, uh, activated in 1977. Not that that is of any importance. I'm looking for the important stuff here that you sh guys should know about. The signals. Um, I have a patch installed that actually simulates signals in tunnels and bridges. Usually in this game you can't put any train signals on tunnels and bridges. Uh, I'm going to use that very very sparse because uh, it's a little buggy I would say it's not exactly something that you ex can expect to see in the final game anytime soon because it just doesn't work very well but it works for uh, some corner cases where I will use it yeah there's two type of signals the electric ones and the standard semaphores the mechanical ones uh, the game will automatically give me the semaphores until 1950 Yes, on a bridge link, this is pretty much all unchanged. I'm not allowing myself to do anything while the game is paused because I have so much going on uh, in terms of lengthening the game that I will have more than enough time to do everything. I use the uh, yet another Pathfinder pretty much for everything. I'm forbidding 90 degrees turns. If you don't know what any of this means, don't worry about it, you will see it in the game. The Ultra Renew, I do six months before uh, the maximum age is reached, but I do that only if I have a million left, otherwise I might end up, uh, especially in the beginning, where I need the money with a lot of money going away. The servicing, um, 
this I'm gonna actually turn into 15 days. Or should we actually... Can't I turn that somehow into 5 days? Yeah, every 5 days I want servicing. Since our days actually last a lot longer, that won't happen so often. The, ship, uh, the uh, vehicles will do a lot more trips before they actually go servicing. Or should we do percent? Oh, well, let's, let's do percent. We can always change it later. So this basically means every every vehicle in this game has a reliability and this means if the reli reliability of the vehicle drops below 10% below its original value go and uh, service it so it's get, uh, getting maintained. Yeah, I'm using reduced breakdowns because the breakdowns are pretty, uh, pretty much the vehicle just stops and smokes and stays that way for a little while. It's pretty annoying and, you know, <coughs> sorry, in the original that happens way too often. In case I ever turn that off totally, I still keep servicing going then. Yeah, I, I uh, don't allow my trains to uh, auto-reverse at stations. This is actually a setting that I thought a whole lot about. You will see in the game why. Maybe I'll actually uh, turn that off later. This is now um, the important stuff. I'm using the realistic acceleration model. I'm using a slope steepness of 1%. And I'm using a cargo multiplier of 15 for the weight. That might seem completely horrendous. But I actually uh, have an Excel sheet here where I calculate the stuff for the trains that I'm using. And it actually makes a whole lot of sense. Now, yeah, so uh, this is all unimportant. Let me quickly go over the important stuff here. You can always pause the video and look at these settings. I'm at least going to show you them all. Initial city size multiplayer for the big cities. That is three. I want the big cities to be actually big so they look like a city. The town uh, cargo generation factor, I think this is also a patch that I'm using. I reduced that by a uh, factor of two, I think that means by four. This is all the same. Here's the day length factor. My days are eight times as long as usual. That means also my income is eight times lower. So I'm actually not going to make any money in the same time, in the same game time. But it will take a lot longer, so we have more time to just enjoy. Disasters I turned off because the initial disasters are actually a lot of fun. Later a UFO shows up and just lands anywhere and blows up a bunch of your tracks. And that is nothing but uh, just incredibly annoying. This is actually uh, the new thing. This is not a patch, this is something that is already in the development uh, build. This will come in the next release of this free game. This is a new model how the cargo in the game is being distributed and these are the settings that I'm going to use for it. Don't worry about it, you will see how it works in the game, but these, uh, if you're familiar with it, these are the, pa uh, the settings that I'm using. Yeah, and this doesn't matter. So, that was it. Uh, another final thing. As a AI, I'm using town cars, which is pretty much an AI that just is gonna spam cities with uh, random cars, which cost nothing. So just we have a little of traffic simulation. Okay, now these are the settings for a map that I'm gonna generate, and I already got a map that I wanna play on that was randomly generated, but I liked it, so I kept their uh, random seed number, so I can always get back to that map. Now we see whether he generates the correct one. Yeah, that looks good. It looks familiar. Quickly check here. I know a few things that I rec will recognize it by. No, wait a second. There's actually a difference here. But I think I know what.
Let me quickly see. Now, first of all, the year is wrong. Hmm. Okay, let me check again. Yeah, you see, this is live commentary. Still looks okay. This part looks very familiar. So the general land shape looks okay. Yeah, that actually looks better. Yeah, 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 yeah. That looks good. That looks perfect. Yeah, that looks good. And there's one more thing where I can check whether this is the actual map. Quickly jump into the mini map here. There's one thing where I know this is gonna be the map because this corner here, yeah. Okay, this is the map. So we're gonna save this as a let's play. So this is where we're gonna start and I'm gonna do one quick thing before we do anything else. I'm gonna skip the first day because I want to see sometimes this uh, AI fails to launch. And now I'm gonna do something else. I'm gonna quickly jump in here. Allow myself quickly to do everything while paused. Then I'm gonna cheat. And I'm cheating by going for the town AI. And yeah, and I'm gonna give the town AI. Am I actually town cars? Yeah. And I'm gonna give this guy a whole bunch of money, repay his entire loan, and give me a little bit more money. Okay. And then I'm gonna switch back to me. And that should be that. Now we should still have the same balance. Yeah, we have a balance of 400,000, which is our entire loan. Okay, that is good. Now I just did that because this uh, AI will otherwise completely run out of money sometime. And when they are out of money, they actually go bankrupt. And that would mean all the vehicles that they built would just vanish. And since I don't want to do that, what to have that happen? Just cheated here, but I cheated not for me, I cheated for my AI. Okay, so now let's get the game running. And the first thing that we're gonna do is look at the minimap. And this is actually just an information that the AI has started. And yeah, there we can just quickly take a look here. Put the vehicles away, uh, the buildings away so we can actually see what they're gonna build. I'm using a few vehicle sets here. Actually, by the way, all the plugins, the new GRFs I'm using, I'm putting them in the video description. They're a little bit changed from uh, what I had in the intro video, but I'm also going to update the intro video description. Uh, some incompatibilities were there. I had to update a few things and I found a few better ones. Now, uh, what is going to build here? It builds a few forts. Fort Model T's. There's actually a rider, <laughs> a horse and a rider there. Uh, I just wanted to make sure it's actually going to build those. Because I have two different sets of vehicles uh, that it can build. Yeah, and from the other set it can only build a horse and a rider. So from uh, it has some just some personal cars and then some uh, standard vehicles. This horse and rider comes from a set that later also has police cars and... Uh, ambulances and stuff like that but enough of that what are we actually gonna do well the initial idea that I have here this is by the way how big the map is the idea that I have here is start at one single point and expand from there across the entire map and end up linking everything and I'm pretty much planning to do that for a road network for a uh, train network for personal carriage and mail and then a cargo network for tr trains I don't know yet whether I'm gonna actually mix 
certain uh, lines for cargo and passenger transportation. That might actually happen. Initially, I might actually keep it separate though. And another thing that I'm gonna do is... Actually, let me pause the game here so we don't waste any time here. And another thing that I'm gonna do is start at a place where I have a lot of towns, a lot of large towns preferably, so I can start up with a little bit of a uh, nice service here. By the way, um, you saw me enter the code for the map. If you enter that code, you should get the exact same map if you use uh, the same. I don't know whether any of the uh, new GRFs actually influence what map you get. I guess the uh, industry settings new GRF, uh, the FIRS new GRF is certainly needed, I think. But the general map layout should actually be generated fine if you enter the same number and have the same settings on that map generation window. So you can play along if you want to and you can uh, maybe link to some screenshots of what are you doing on the map. So this is actually a nice area here. If it wasn't so hilly here, we have some nice big cities over there. Let me actually look at that. Yeah, this, this city is actually a little bit more difficult to connect here. Especially with the earlier locomotives, the steam locomotives connecting these up. will be a little bit difficult. <coughs> so yeah, this uh, might not be the best spot. This is interesting. Oh, this, this, this might be nice. Yeah, this, this group of cities here. You have one, two, three, four, five. One actually goes along the river. Yeah, this is actually not that big, but uh, it's okay, I think. Hmm. Well, at least this one, this one, this one and this one could be connected up, especially this one. Heilbronn. They're a little close together for a train network, but uh, I mean, who cares? Let's see whether we can find something similar that is a little bit further apart. Hmm. This is actually closer together. <laughs> um, here we have something going on. This this is kind of in a valley surrounded by all these hills, so that might not be a very good spot either. You saw I used a uh, hilly map. Because I didn't want to have a completely flat map, I wanted to have a little bit more of a nice, realistic landscape. Yeah, I'm actually thinking we're gonna start from this one. Yeah, I think we're gonna start here. So, okay, let's get going. First of all, let me max out my loan because we're gonna need all the money that we can get. And then we're just going to use the slowest uh, trains that we can get here. And I'm just going to put the default stations. I will upgrade them later to look a little nicer. And initially, let me quickly check, I have some stuff here on my laptop right next to me. Initially, platform length of 3 should be enough, it's probably more than enough. Do we actually need to go past this town? Yeah, we actually need to go past, which means this thing is actually a little bit in the way. Hmm, where do we put this? Like that, it doesn't have a lot of catchment area.
Let me actually... No, I have an idea. Let me actually put it over here. And I'm gonna start with a simple 1-1 one -one connection here. Nothing fancy at all. Hmm... This guy is kind of in a way... Yeah, this guy, guy is kind of in a way... This is actually gonna cost a little bit, but... Uh, I don't really care right now. There we go. Put a train depot in. It's just very, very simple. Nothing fancy. And then we have one steamy locomotive here, the BR92. BR stands for Baureihe, which basically means model. Model 92. Oh wait, I have something very, very different that we need to do still. Already prepared a face. That's not how I look, but uh, this was the most friendly and somehow most competent face I could create in here. So that's us. And I think we're gonna leave that color scheme, except for the second color, which is gonna be cream. Just go with me for that here, and the company name should at this point, if I'm not mistaken... Deutsche Reichsbahn. German Imperial... Train Service, whatever. Okay, so let's buy one of these. And let's put them... Do we actually get mail here? Yeah, accept mail. No, we don't accept mail there. But, uh, let me actually quickly check something. Yeah, there's actually not any mail in that town whatsoever. So, yeah, we're gonna leave that away. And we're gonna put I think four of these is enough for now. We can always expand it later. And then just go back and forth here and try to get a full load for now. Yeah. Okay. It's probably gonna be struggling up the hill there a little bit. But that's it, that's our first train going. And since both of these are actually a little off the uh, main line, let me actually make a little bit of a trick here. This might happen to me often that I switch between these. Now I want a bus station here, not a lorry station. And then we do this. And we do... This. And then we put a little dipo here. And we're gonna buy some buses. The Vomark P20F. It's a nice little truck. Runs only 40 kilometers per hour. Holds 18. Sorry if I'm sounding like I'm leaning forward, that's because I am. So, you know, if you've been following my channel, I have a little bit of a reading problem these days. So, please forgive me for that. And here's actually where the cargo distribution comes in. Now, 
originally, let me quickly pause while I'm explaining this. Originally, um, there were no distribution targets for any of the cargo. So any cargo packet you could deliver pretty much anywhere to any station that would accept that cargo. And the only thing that would matter is the distance that you that the cargo traveled and in what time it traveled. I can actually show you that here. So these are the cargo payment rates. As you can see, these curves all drop over time. So the longer it takes you to deliver them, the less payment you'll get for them. <coughs> now, some of these curves are more steep than others. It's probably something like food. Food will, uh, of course, lose quicker in uh, value because it goes bad than, let's say, coal or, so or oil or something. Now, in Cargo Dist, which is a uh, thing that comes to the game, you actually have now a distribution. Now every cargo, including passengers, actually wants to go to a certain station. It only uh, takes stations into account that actually can be reached by your routing scheme, but it will distribute them across them. So before, if I wanted to actually get a feeder service going here, which is what I intend to do, I want to grab people across town and get them to the train station, and from the train station, they can get <coughs> to the other sound, uh, to the other town here. Now, originally, I would have to do that with orders: collect them here, collect them here, and then drop them here for a transfer over there. But that would exclude anybody from getting from there to there, or from there to there, or even backwards from the train station back into the town. So that would be a whole lot of mess in terms of orders for ve your vehicles. Now the passengers will get on where they want to because they know they can get somewhere and they will get off where they want to get off. So you don't have to worry about anything anymore. Now I gave this vehicle simply the orders to go to the stations and loop that around. And I'm actually gonna build three of these and then I'm just trying to send them on their way. <coughs> and this will, and the rest will happen automatically. Now, how to make sure they don't all arrive at the same time? Now, there is a feature in here that is a timetable. You can actually set a timetable for each of these. But there is a patch that I installed where I just can do this, click automate, and that will cause these vehicles to pretty much create their own timetable so they all have a, have a nice distribution across the town. Let me quickly speed up the game so you actually get an idea on how that works. You will see that one of these vehicles will wait a little at the station and this um, timetable will keep updating. By the way that it shows minutes here is a little change that I made just to have some meaningful values here. Before you could change that to in-game uh, days, which doesn't make any sense if you lengthen the day, you would always get uh, zero here. Or in-game ticks and the player doesn't know what a tick is, so that doesn't help either. So I changed it to minutes. And as you can see, these guys are spreading out. They're waiting at the stations to uh, spread themselves out a little. And there we go. Now we have a nice distribution of these guys. And what I can also show you now is the cargo distribution. Because if I activate my company here and I show this network, you will see that this guy will update. It should add the station. Oh, it has already updated the station. There is a thin green line here. Now you see this is the legend. Everything that is dark green, which means basically that's the color that was there before that you hardly could see. That basically means everything is fine. If it turns light green, that actually means you have possibly too many vehicles going on there because you have more capacity to transport stuff than is actually there. If it turns red, that means you have too little of something. And in this case, yeah, we actually have guys waiting here. So we're gonna clone this vehicle. And I'm doing that by uh, clicking on them with holding control. What that does is these guys are actually going to use shared orders. Now if they just cloned them, they would copy these orders. The shared orders are, if I change them for one, I change them for all. Which, if they all travel the same route, is exactly what you want. 
and they're all gonna fit into that automation of the timetable now so the timetable will now adjust to accommodate these new vehicles though they spread out evenly that's all happening automatically I think that is a very nice patch because that's something that no player should do in my opinion working out this kind of crap and another thing that we can do that I forgot now yeah I completely forgot what I was gonna do it doesn't matter because I know what I wanted to do here I wanted to do the exact same thing over here now I actually want to get a nice loop in here but I don't want to do that in front of the tracks because I might actually want to go up there so it's always good to have loops so your vehicles don't have to turn around at some point um, so we want to have this guy if you click somewhere that is not exactly connected to original station you can control click somewhere and then it asks you whether you want to connect it to an original station and they actually gonna rename that station yeah I think I want one here and then I want one over here and that should be fine and my road depot I'm gonna put right here and I'm gonna buy another one of these and I'm setting them here where's my other thing there and there then I'm gonna do the same thing again clone these vehicles activate an automated timetable and send them on their way there we go. Now these guys should all feed their, their stuff into the train uh, stations. I'm actually gonna rename this guy to uh, so this is actually a big state big city. Yeah, there's a big city, so they could end up with more train stations. So we're gonna call this HPF, which basically means Hauptbahnhof which in German means main station and we're gonna do the same here I think yeah because I actually want to see that this is a train station oh my lord tons of people waiting ah this was what I was gonna do here you can actually see the cargo distribution from all these guys you can see where they want to go so all these guys that are waiting here are waiting from this station now if a train delivered something here from another station you would see that these guys came from somewhere else and are waiting here to be distributed any further by these buses for example so we have a lot of people waiting here to go to the other via Oh, I'm actually looking at Günzburg. I'm looking at this guy. Okay, so they want to go via the train station to the petrol station. So they know there's a network going on in this way. So they want to go via this station with the bus line to there. They also want to go via the, the uh, main station to the main station. So they actually want to get off there. And then we have some guys who want go via this with the train over here and then we have some guys who don't care where they want to go this is basically that the th main does the thing doesn't have ha uh, hasn't had time to distribute these guys yet whoa forgot how to speak English there for a second so you don't have to ca care about this too much unless you see a lot of red lines then you need to check okay where do these guys actually want to go Now one thing that I might actually do here is, yeah, like, let me actually uh, do something else here. I have a little feature implemented here that once I uh, drop these guys on the new group button, automatically a new group will be activated that uh, actually has the stations in there. 
Uh, that is the new feature. You can uh, get a new group and name that by yourself. The only thing that is new here and not in the original game is that it gets autom automatically named by dropping it on here. And this is actually in the game that everybody can do. If you have a vehicle in here and you go to add shared vehicles, everything is going to be added here that has the same orders. That is very easy to create groups like this. Now you have groups for all the vehicles handling the same thing. And now I actually want to uh, take these guys off here. And I want to go in all the orders lists and say stop sharing. Because for these guys, I actually want them to go the other way around. Yeah, exactly. And you can also share orders by uh, clicking, also holding control so you share orders, clicking on the vehicle, that way you copy, share the orders of that vehicle. So now we have different orders here, which means these guys are actually going in the opposite direction. Needed to make sure I have different station at the beginning because you kind of end up with the same station names here. If you uh, no with three, that's not possible. If you have four stations, you can switch them around and still have the same start and end station. So that wouldn't create a different name for a group here. That's uh, why I'm a little bit careful here. So now, if someone wants to go from here to here, they can do that directly, and they don't have to go past here. And the timetable for these guys should still be on automation. Yeah, so that is still going on for everybody. So they will now synchronize in the other direction. Now this network is actually well fed. So I don't think I need to add anything here yet. But this should work out fine. And I don't think I need to create a train group yet, but uh, oh hell, why not? This group name is, by the way, a lot longer than the original game is probably gonna allow you. Um, I changed that also so I can have a little bit longer names, although otherwise this wouldn't work. Doesn't matter, however. You can use uh, shorts in your game. As I mentioned, most of the stuff that I added here in code is just convenience stuff. Uh, all the main functionality here is exactly the same. Except for this automatic uh, timetabling. That you have to go through the forums and beg the developers to actually put that into the game. <laughs> because I think that's an excellent feature and it actually works quite well. Haven't had any problems with it whatsoever, so I think that... Uh, actually looks very very nice so okay while well, this is going on we might actually want to connect another city up here might actually connect this one up hmm. now since we cannot reverse Add a city. I want actually to put another station in here. And I have some add-ons loaded to get these stations a little bit of a nicer look. Actually, do I want to go anywhere from here? Yeah, probably. Hmm. So yeah, I probably should orient it a little bit like this. Probably. Might be a little close. But we can work with that for now. Also, we don't have to worry about any of these very steep curves because 
The trains that we're dealing with here are incredibly slow still anyway. So that's not such a big deal. These slopes, however, are a little bit of a big deal. Actually, let me do it this way. Okay, yeah. Another depot in here. This is all just preliminary work. This doesn't mean that this is gonna actually stay that way. Now, what do we have here? Mail. A mail, okay. Means we can put a mail van in. And again, that should be enough for now. And uh, we're gonna go here, and I'm gonna go there. And uh, I'm gonna full load every station so we actually have something going, going on here, sorry. Oh, that's not what I wanted, I wanted this. There we go. Let's actually name these guys. This was our first. And then this is a normal personal train. So I'm gonna name this one P1. And this one is the same. So we're gonna name this one P2. Now I don't know whether I'm gonna name the vehicles. We're already running a little over the time that I planned for this episode. So I'm gonna name these vehicles off camera and when we're back we're gonna put probably another bus service in here and I might do that off camera no, I'm not, a, not gonna do that off camera but at least the renaming of all these vehicles that you don't have to watch so yeah this is it for the first episode sorry for the long intro with all this technical stuff and all these settings from now on it's gonna be pure gameplay and I hope you're looking forward to it because you can see we're still in the first year. We're only in April 1920 by now. In at normal speed, we would now already be uh, yeah in 1925 or something like that. So yeah, this is gonna last quite a long time. And I hope you're looking forward to us together connecting this entire map. Are we gonna be able to do it? I'm pretty sure we can. So yeah, once we have these three cities connected, will we connect more cities to the uh, network? Or gonna are we gonna go for the first cargo train? You wanna see in the next episode. Until then, I say keep your he heads up, folks, and I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>